Hello and welcome back to Ask Housing. Today we are at Khaitan & Company in Mumbai. Khaitan & Company is a legal firm which is over 100 years old. We are catching up with Kumar Saurabh Singh who is partner and he is an IBC expert. I'm Chumur Ghosh, I'm the editor-in-chief of Housing.com News and we'll be talking to Saurabh about how effective are the IBC laws in terms of protecting home buyers' interests. Saurabh, great to have you on our show. Thank you. Before we get down to the more specific questions, it would be great if you could just sort of tell us what is the IBC about, which is the Insolvency in the Bankruptcy Code 2016, which are the main stakeholders, you know, that it seems to protect within its purview. So if you could give us like an overview. So Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code is a new law which yeah. came about a year and a half back. Yeah. Uh, in the background that uh, there were multiplicity of laws in India governing the rights of creditor vis-a-vis -vis yeah. the debtor. So, on yeah. the creditor-debtor regime, there were multiplicity of laws which complicates yeah. enforcement process and uh, with the increasing amount of bad debt in the banking yeah. system, yeah. this law was introduced to give a single forum where all the stakeholders can be brought together and a resolution process can be worked in a time bound manner. Yeah. That was the objective of the law. What triggers the law? Yeah. The law is triggered on account of default. Yeah. If a company is unable to pay its dues 1 lakh or above, hmm. a financial creditor or operational creditor can take the debtor to insolvency hmm. and the result of commencement of insolvency is that shareholders lose the governance mm. rights, yeah. board is uh, suspended. Yeah. So, instead of going through a long drawn process of yeah. enforcement of security, this is a strong law which gives creditors rights mm. in governance as well as uh, transfer of control over the assets if yeah. a company is not able to manage its house. Yeah. So, in that sense, it is a very strong law which yeah. has been given to the lenders yeah. who were reeling under a long drawn recovery yeah. process yeah. which was otherwise available. One of the unintended consequences has been the real estate yeah. sector where we yeah. see that uh, there is uh, uh, news reports coming about home buyers yeah. feeling aggrieved with yeah. this whole process being initiated. Having said that, I mean the law has been brought with a very good objective and in lot of cases we see insolvency has been introduced and currently under implementation and uh, it is definitely going to bring the much needed credit discipline which was uh, required in the banking sector in India. So, you know you mentioned that it is a relatively new law. So, uh, whole of last year we have also been reading reports about you know how the government and the powers that be acknowledge that certain certain areas, there is some reworking required, there have been a lot of talks of amendments. Would you perhaps like to sort of update us on that, what is happening on that front? Right. So, I mean in last one and a half years, unlike some of, uh, some of the other uh, laws, we have tried to test this law with some of the large default cases. Yeah. And, and the objective clearly was that if there are problems, let it come out very yeah. clearly because in large cases all the complexities are yeah. there, problems will yeah. come out and it has been coming out and government has been very responsive, making yeah. changes from time to time. One of the key changes which was introduced towards the end of last year was to not allow existing promoters of yeah. companies yeah who were involved in management of yeah. the affairs and the company goes into insolvency, they cannot come back and participate in resolution yeah. process yeah. Yeah. Uh, without clearing the dues. Yeah. Yeah. So, if they clear the outstanding dues, mm. they have ability to come back, but otherwise they do not can't come back and participate in the resolution process. Yeah. This was not originally permitted under the law, yeah. but this was brought through the amendment. So, that th there may be different views on the yeah. merit of this amendment, but that was one big change. Yeah. Apart from that, there are several other clarifications on how the resolution process should be conducted, how the bidding for these assets should be done. Yeah. There has to be because you are dealing with public assets yeah. here, you have to ensure transparency because you have your banking sector's recovery affected yeah. on account of how the resolution process is right. done. So, there is lot of clarifications coming from time to time yeah. from government side, but it is a new law and it is a evolving law. So, yeah. one does not know in which direction it is going and, and but government good thing about uh, the government is it has been very responsive. The NCLTs have been yeah. very, very proactive 
in ensuring the timelines are adhered. Yeah. So, that is yeah. a very big positive somewhere uh, we have realized that delay causes more yeah. prejudice than anything Absolutely. else and, and the NCLTs have also been very, very tuned to the requirements of the times and have been giving by and large uh, orders, rulings adhering to the timeline of 270 days prescribed under the code. And what are your thoughts on the, uh, you know, RBI amendment, you know, the, the rules that came out just yesterday and they, they call it like, you know, they are tightening the <laughs> news on willful uh, defaulters. What are your thoughts on so, that? I think this um, whole thing started with the ordinance last year yeah. which gave RBI power to direct banks to take certain defaulters into insolvency. Yeah. RBI framed certain guidelines in terms of which top 12 were first yeah. into insolvency. Then you had next 25 which were put into insolvency. But having said that as a regulator, they may not, RBI may not want to look at case by case approach every time. Yeah. So, now having put about 20, 40, 45 cases in insolvency in exercise of their yeah. powers, they realize that there is a requirement of a rule based system system on which cases should go to insolvency. Alongside you also have different RBI restructuring yeah. regimes which yeah. were also injecting mm -hmm. complexity and at the same time giving opportunity to bankers to yeah. do multiple rounds of restructuring before they lose all hope of re realization and then go into yeah. insolvency. Yeah. So, by the time you reach insolvency, there is a significant depletion in yeah. value. Yeah. So, now the new regime prescribes if there is default within mm -hmm. 180 days, you resolve yeah. the case, else put it in insolvency. And the resolution um, is implemented only if 20 percent of the debt is recovered. True, so, true. till 20 percent is recovered, really the um, resolution is in some ways mm -hmm. still going yeah. to be open for uh, RBI discretion and RBI clearly prescribes that if there is any default till 20 percent is recovered, you immediately put the company into insolvency. Yeah. So, no second round of restructuring very clearly and uh, I think putting it in a time bound manner at least for new cases, it is a very positive uh, move. In the short run, it will have negative impact yeah. on the provisioning for banks. So, you yeah. will see today um, stock market for a lot of companies may be reacting negatively, yeah. bank stocks may be down. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in the long run, I think uh, we are trying to align ourselves to international standards yeah. on credit side and that would also help us raise capital on the banking sector. So, yeah. it cannot be that government keeps on capitalizing these yeah. banks. Yeah. You want to see more and more private capital coming yeah. in and that will come only if you are able to align your practices with international best practices and yeah. I think it is a move in that direction. Yeah, so you know now I am going to come back to my, my sector. So, you know with the Amripali and the JP cases, you know one of the major anxieties you know that have evolved from the home buyer side of it is they are not considered a financial creditor and so in the food chain it looks like you know their interests and whatever financial compensation that is you know privy to them, it sort of comes last in the list. I would like to ask you does that seem fair? in terms of everything that we have seen last year? So, let me first explain what is the law. Yeah. Uh, in, when an insolvency process starts, in the first 270 days a company is required to be resolved. If yeah. you can resolve the company, then there is no question of liquidation. Okay. So, home buyer should not have anxiety that every company which goes into insolvency is going to shut down. Fantastic. Okay. So, that is not going to happen. In resolution, what the law now prescribes, the existing promoter cannot be in control of the company immediately upon commencement yeah. or thereafter at the end of the yeah. process. It has to go to someone who is financially yeah. solvent and can turn it yeah. around. So, in that sense again it is a good thing yeah. that you are giving company in, in the hands of a solvent person so that that is your best chance to sure. complete the project. Right. The third risk is uh, which is uh, which has obviously caught media attention and has got home buyers very worried is that if there is a liquidation situation mm. where do they fall in yeah. priority and yeah. in priority clearly financial creditors being people who have lent against time yeah. value of money, yeah. banks, financial institutions, bond market, they are higher in priority. Yeah. And 
you are not even an operational creditor yeah. because who is operational creditor? Operational creditor is supplier of goods and services, yeah. government, yeah. but yeah. not the consumer, yeah. not the buyer of the product which is being sold, which yeah. is the units which is developed by the real estate companies. So, I think that problem was realized by yeah. government. They have amended the regulations to let home buyers submit their yeah. claim to the resolution yeah. professional. So, that when the plan is being approved, yeah. at that stage NCLT and the committee of creditors must ensure that their interest is protected. Yeah. So, I mean, would we be in the future, would they be like considered secured creditors? Is that bound to happen? I I am not very sure whether they will become secured creditors, but by because that's putting it down on paper, yes, right? But yeah. that's a liquidation situation. Yeah. If you are a home buyer, I am a home buyer. I am not interested in the pro project being sold because it will be sold at a distressed yeah. value, so yeah. there won't be good value. I am interested in project being con uh, completed. Yeah. So if say two, three, four, five developers who are currently in insolvency, someone else steps in. Yeah and completes the project, yeah. that is a better situation for sure. me, for me as a consumer, as yeah. a buyer and, and which is where I feel the resolution stage by putting this requirement that NCLT has to consider the yeah. interest of home buyers, yeah. NCLT would be bound to see to it that if there is resolution, the project should be completed. You yeah. cannot have a situation where uh, you are approving a resolution and project is sure. not being completed. Sure. So, that is in some ways protecting the interest. Yeah. Yeah. In a worst case situation, while law can facilitate, but if there is no bidder for such yeah. a project and yeah. the promoter is not allowed to bid, you have no other option but to liquidate. Yeah. So, you will have to liquidate the land and the construction on uh, in, uh, in in the form that it exists yeah. at the end of 270 day period at that point of time uh, yes today home buyers are lower in priority yeah. over secured creditors yeah. unsecured financial yeah. creditors even yeah. operational creditor that's a point of concern but i think it's a big dilemma on government's part yeah. also yeah. because if you put all these people at part of, at par with secured creditors it can also affect bankability of future projects. That's true. You That's keep, true. I mean, a, a lender who is taking the risk of construction, you may have bought a unit, he has given 70 percent of the initial cost yeah. of construction. Yeah. Now, can you tell him that uh, look here in, in a liquidation, which is the worst situation yeah, yeah. for which you require security, your security is going to get diluted. True. That is a big dilemma on Very government's true. part. Very I true. think other way of addressing this problem could be that you prescribe in law that like RERA, RERA yeah, now yeah. puts lot of control on how yeah. the, the whole operation of business and construction of the Very project true. is done. You can put restrictions under RERA or any other law that you cannot sell till you reach a certain level of com yeah, completion. Yeah, yeah. That could be one way today. So you are you, seeing more like a prevention is better than cure yeah, scenario. Prevention works which, best. which happens in lot of countries. Yeah, yeah. So, if you look at a UK model, you look at a Dubai model, there are ways to protect. Sure. So, those can be introduced here. Okay. Uh, you can't sell till you reach a certain level of so that the risk is minimal. Yeah. But the uh, entire problem being resolved in a way that secured creditors are at par with home yeah. buyers yeah. may not actually in the long term help the sector. It is not a case where government is funding the uh, real estate sector. Yeah. It is largely banks and financial True. institutions and private investment which is going. True. Now, True. private investment will not take that risk if yeah. you are saying in a bad situation their security is diluted. So, that is a, a concern which is there. Uh, but I think uh, the clarifications from government side to address home buyers interest in resolution, I would put it as a very big onus now on lenders and NCLT to ensure that yeah. the project is completed. Yeah. And what about uh, home buyers responsibility and this is where I am coming from when the JP and the Amrapali cases broke. We had a lot of home buyers writing into us that oh anyway it seems like I am not going to get my home, the company will possibly you know get liquidated, uh, why bother paying my home loan EMI, I am going to stop paying my EMI. Is that the legally correct thing to do? What should a home buyer do in such a situation? So, if you see when the resolution 
insolvent pro insolvency process starts it's not a liquidation process yeah when the ins when insolvency starts if you are unable to pay your debt if you are unable to pay your debt the law takes away the control of the company from shareholders yeah. gives it to a independent professional who is monitored by the lenders and it's a 270 day moratorium period yeah. during which the effort the entire efforts at resolution is yeah. being made but the company is being run as a going concern yeah. so during the 270 day period there's no reason not to pay okay. i think as a interested uh, stakeholder consumer should try finding yeah. out what is being done yeah. to complete the project put resolution professional under responsibility not to let any delays happen yeah. do whatever is required to expedite yeah. and where you also have to act bona fide true, i true. mean if you want something to be expedited yeah. you can't stop paying that's Very not true. the way but once liquidation happens if at the end of 270 days say a developer who was in insolvency is put in liquidation then yeah. by law you will not be required Re to pay yeah. because the company is no longer a going concern so yeah. that i think uh, before that taking this kind of action may not be seen to be a bona fide act yeah. and there are other ways to express your grievance yeah. with nclt through rp or approaching courts instead of taking a recourse in term which doesn't appear to be bona fide yeah so sort of my last question to you is you know so there is the nclt and if you don't like their judgment you can go to the nclat there is of course the consumer protection act now there's reda if you could just sort of simplify for our viewers like how do they all stack up against each other are they complementing each other are they mutually exclusive how are these legal processes working so again i mean nclt rera consumer protection act these three legislations have come at different points yeah. in time nclt as i said was not only looking at real estate sector yeah. but the larger economy where yeah. you had uh, credit problem rera is trying to address uh, operational uh, stage of uh, company which is in real estate sector by prescribing benchmarks up yeah. to which they have to stand and ensuring timely reporting a regulator is monitoring yeah. so yeah. that is a discipline which is being introduced but the fact that insolvency process starts i think till the law is amended in yeah. any form whether you make them secured creditor or you give rera special authority for insolvency cases till then once the insolvency mm. process starts yeah. uh, rera or consumer protection act Uh, related rulings may not be able sure. to be enforced against a corporate debtor which is in insolvency so NC nclt would in some ways take over the yeah. jurisdiction at least during that 270 day period yeah. because there is a moratorium you yeah. can't pass an order against the company which can be enforced so you you can pass an order nevertheless it won't be enforceable yeah. so i think uh, nclt would override yeah. but uh from a consumer's perspective does this mean that for every as thing you should run to insolvency uh, process and to nclts i wouldn't advise that okay. if if you are interested in completion of the project yeah. uh, there is uh, lack of information flow timelines are not being adhered i think rera is the yeah. authority which should be approached and yeah. rera is fully equipped to address that problem but if there is a credit problem and financial institutions operational creditors are losing faith in the developer yeah. then i think it's time to be alert and and make sure that as a block as a individual buyer you are heard by nclt and by the resolution professional yeah. and resolution professional is duty bound to hear all stakeholders so he has to be put yeah. under a uh, responsibility and whatever requests are there can be addressed to him you will get information and i think by and large resolution professionals are acting with lot of maturity yeah. uh, and in discharging their duty so i think there can be redressal through this process yeah. uh, but it's not a situation where for every problem one yeah. should run to insolvency yeah. forum because then it may not actually give you the kind of uh, resolution that you are looking at yeah. by and large the law is offering this as a uh, um, opportunity for financial yeah. creditors and operational creditors yeah. to ensure credit discipline yeah. and i think that's the way it should be looked at yeah. and consumers should by and large stick to rera and uh, consumer protection act 
yeah. except where um, insolvency process is initiated and you want the authority to take note yeah. of your concerns. Yeah. Thank you, Saurabh. Those were great insights. Well, that's all that we have time for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. We will see you soon. Goodbye and have a great day.